Okay. Um, um, I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Thank you, Karen. Do I have a second? Lynn Rapsilver will second. Thank you, Lynn. Um, all in favor of voting the uh, November 2020, uh, the November 13th, 2023 minutes as amended. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any abstentions? Okay. I think we look good. And I think uh, minutes uh, from November 13th, 2023 are approved. Um, and just to make everyone aware, I believe we have started recording uh, this meeting and it will be posted publicly. Um, so next, we have um, just, you know, to kind of wrap up our discussion, um, I think Judy and Joyce sent out uh, one more round of revisions. I believe I did share that with the group, so hopefully everyone had a chance to review what they've proposed. Um, if we want, I can pull that document up to share, uh, and we can jump right into the discussion. Um, you know, I think I think at the second meeting, um, it, we kind of hashed out that maybe other than that pharmacological piece, um, the committee members here really didn't have an issue with the scope. Um, there's just um, some question about the language and is it too specific? Does it need to be broader? Um, you know what? You know what? What's best for the profession? Um, so let me just see if I can find that final revision document and I'll share it. So. Um if if I can, while uh, you're doing that, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll just kind of jumpstart the conversation to say that um, I think while we don't love the laundry list, we understand what the OTs are trying to achieve, and we think the changes that they have made uh, in this latest proposal address the concerns we had around the pharmacology piece and uh, around kind of scope of practice. I fully expect that if this proposal comes up at the legislature, that LCO will redraft language and we'll probably be back talking about the specifics. But I think conceptually, they've tried to address the concerns we raised. And while it may not be the exact way we would love to do it, we think it does address the concerns. And so we're comfortable with it as it is. Okay, thank you. Um, so Karen, I, I like I looked at these briefly and I think you probably have more experience with this than I do, but I, I know there was a the concern that the way it was drafted, it made it sound like um, certain non-licensed non professions would not be able to do some of these things um, that they do currently do. Uh, do. Did you feel the revisions addressed that? Right, I think the lead, we think the lead in sentence that the OTs tried to solve that problem, I, I, think, I think candidly, you know, there are certain attorneys who would view that one way or the other, but I think it's it. the intent is to resolve it and we'll likely have these conversations in front of the legislature when the LCO does the drafting. I'm not sure if they'll draft it the same way. And then I think we agree on the intent and I think the attempt that the OTs made uh, will, will, um, will go a long way to solving those problems. I think when the draft comes out from LCO, we'll have to kind of revisit things. So um, I think... It's a it's a significant step in the right direction, but I think we're going to be talking about language more specifically when it gets drafted. And um, so, from our perspective, it's 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 good enough for now, knowing that we'll continue to have conversations in this session. Lynn, I see you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, to Karen's point, I agree with everything that she said, um, and I am paying special attention to the prescribing uh, section, which they did take into account account all the um, suggested revisions and they did place those in there, which I am appreciative of that. And I do not have any objections to that part of the language. Okay, thank you. So I have a, a question. I was approached by an occupational therapist this morning when I was at a nursing facility and there was another modality, for instance, that she was told she could not do that we don't have here. Um, and I insisted that she was not going to be able to do it and working for that company um, because our scope did not include it. <clears throat> um, so as we move forward, I think you had mentioned previously, Sarah, that there might be opportunities to continue to tweak language. Is that the case? So, I mean, this can be tweaked until any such legislation is raised and goes through the process and is passed. Now, I will say, and I think we've talked about this before, the, the potential downside to listing out every single task is that 
as things like this continue to come up, so new technologies, new modalities, modalities that you might not have thought of here, um, if they're not in the list, someone can come back and say, well, it's not in your list, so you can't do it, which is, um, again, why most scopes of practice are written more broadly. Um, so just, you know, I think, again, at the end of the day, it's, if this is what your profession wants, then that's what you can move forward with. But um, if things continue to come up and they're not in the scope, you'd have to continue to ask to reopen your scope, and the department might not always have the resources to take up your request. Uh, so I think to just keep that in mind. Um, if you do go forward with something that's more specific compared to a, a broader writing of some of these things, um, there may be unintended consequences. Yeah, we understand, and which is why we still want to keep the includes but is not limited to. So that might be a, a backdoor way to, you know, this particular procedure has been an established procedure for, you know, years and years. Um, so again, the reason why we're opening the scope is so that we can prevent, you know, um, past common procedures from not being, you know, being able to be used in the um, profession. Thank you. Karen. Oh, sorry, Lynn. Lynn was first. Sorry. Uh, so I just wanted to add, I, I agree that, um, you know, it will be more difficult to add things on in the future uh, because of the fact that you have to go through a scope review majority of the time to get these things added in. It's very time consuming and resource consuming as well, which is one of the reasons why you know, we try to advocate for a broader um, inter a broader description of what your profession actually does so that you don't have to keep coming back. One of the fears is that if you can you reopen your scope, you can actually take steps backwards. So that's the other thing to think about is, you know, you're trying to move this forward, but you do run the risk when you open it that you might lose what you already have as well. So just to keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. 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 but thank you so much. We appreciate that. Yeah. Karen. Um, so I just wanted to, um, one, reiterate, that's why we're concerned about the list, <laughs> because usually lists end up backfiring. It may just take some time to get there. But so that's just, you know, a general caution, which, you know, you if you're choosing to do differently, that's your choice. But just want to note that that is a concern, which is why we're, we are we don't recommend the list. But the other piece I want to just be clear on is even if you had a list that was all inclusive in your scope, employers can choose not to permit licensed people to do that work. So I, I just want to be clear, and that's something that, you know, from a hospital perspective, we would we would still want that a policy and procedure could be more strict or stringent than the statute permits. So I just want to caution you that you may not be able to solve all of those problems because employers will want to be able to be more restrictive. Thanks, Karen. Do we have any other questions? comments um, or final thoughts on what is proposed? Chris? Hello, everybody. It's Chris Andresen again. And um, sorry to keep on harping on the laundry list of stuff, but you know, just so you all know, like we've had professions do that, um, like hairdressers, um, estheticians. You know, those are the professions that tend to have um, laundry lists. Um, and then in those professions, new things are coming up all the time. Oh, can I do a hyaluronic pen on somebody's face? It, you know, and we get those questions and it's like, we don't know. We are not experts on that, you know, and we have to go by, we're, we're not, a ter we're not, we don't interpret laws in that way. Um, so, you know, and, and I've seen it happen before. Um, where there's really unintended consequences. And I, I know I'm just parroting what everybody said, but we're really, we're not doing it to try to be difficult with you. We're doing it because we've all been here before and we've seen sort of how these things backfire on professions sometimes. So just want to give you that word of caution that sometimes broader, you know, and then you can say, well, yeah, this is 
this is seems to be X, Y, and Z. So it looks like it's within their scope versus, you know, it's not on the list and we don't have the expertise to determine it. So it's going to be undetermined um, for quite a long time no, um, unless you get yeah, something changed. We so. appreciate that. We have, you know, we have tossed that around long and hard with our national association, with our, you know, the A code, with all the professionals, um, all the academics at the schools, and we've thought long and hard about it, but it is the Model Practice Act of, the, of our National Association and all of the states are following suit. Um, so we, we felt the need, it keeps coming up that there, there were there, that the broadness of our scope is limiting people. So I, I understand both sides of the equation, um, but it's, it's, it's a sufficient enough, you know, obstacle where we felt like we needed to take action by doing this. Karen? Um, so just one thing, uh, Judy, to think about on the, on the national level, Connecticut's approach to scope of practice is very different <laughs> than other states. Most other states have a particular board or have the ability for folks to come forward and ask if, um, if something is considered within the scope. That's not a functionality that really happens in Connecticut. It's it, you don't have a board, and as Chris said, the Department of Public Health doesn't uh, generally take into take that into consideration unless there's um, kind of legal challenges to do so. So I just you know maybe in your conversations with the national other states have the ability for those OTs to go to someone within their profession to really um, determine whether it is within their scope, that's not going to be a functionality available in Connecticut um, under the current scheme. So I just, it might be worth you having that conversation because I, I, I do suspect you will have a number of unintended consequences that you don't want to have happen um, with this laundry list. Again, that may be what you choose to do, but just in my all of my years of experience and working with national groups, they don't understand how Connecticut scope of practice is very different than other states. Um, so I just wanted to caution you on that. Um, not unique to all of you, but other professions too. But Connecticut is very, very different. So it's not something you can change very quickly. I'll also just add, um, because my name is on the scope of practice website, I often field a lot of calls and emails from professions. Is this in my scope? Is this in my scope? Is this in my scope? The only ones I really answer are the ones that I go to their statue and it says XYZ is not in your scope and I can point that out to them. Um, typically, the rest of my responses are, here's a link to your scope of practice. Please review it. And um, it is not up to me to make that determination. So, um, you know, I, I will, you know, the department, we do get calls about it. I, I do try to help where I can, but really the only thing I'm comfortable telling people is this is not in your scope. And here's where I can show you. Yeah, I mean, we, we thought that this is as comprehensive as we could possibly make it. And um, we feel as though it covers just about everything that we do. So I think we're good for at least the next 10 years. <laughs> I'm just I'm just wondering because I don't know. Um, because the question I got from someone recently was. Is dry needling within the scope of practice of an OT? You know, I don't know if that's in your in your list of things that's in there. OK. I was trying to read it, but it was long, so I didn't. I couldn't see it. Do we have any other questions or comments?
Chris, it looks like you're reading through something. Do you have anything? Oh, I am. I'm just, I'm just reading the list of things. That's fine. I just want to give everyone a minute just to make sure we're, we're good. I'll just add one more thing when it comes to the scope. Less is more. And I think that's really the motto you should be thinking about. I know you're trying to make a comprehensive list of all the things that you're capable of doing. Um, and that could be a potential issue going forward because it is too too narrow and too focused. So consider broadening your message when it comes to the scope. I think that you'll have much more success down the road by doing that. Yeah, Lynn, I just wanted to comment on that um, because our our scope of practice has been written, <clears throat> excuse me, very broadly, and we have come into problems and challenges because it's broadly. So that's, <laughs> excuse me, we've been very mindful of of trying to um, have a, a bit more uh, specificity in there. Aaron. Um, I just want to say, I, I think one of the things that would be helpful for you guys to do maybe in the interim is for you to figure out, is it because an employer is saying it's not permitted or not within their scope or not what they want to do, right? Because there are three different things, right? Um, and um, so I just, you may, be sol you may be solving one problem, but causing more. And I just, it's just a caution because I've been scoped for 20, way more years than I care to admit, 20 something years. And so I just, I'm concerned that you're going to get, not going to get what you want and have more problems. I think the questions we've had are because it's not in the scope. And so the employer feels uncomfortable because it, our scope is written too broadly. Okay, so seeing no additional hands up unless any last last call for comments. So I was going to move on to the next item in the agenda, um, which is just the concluding remarks and the next steps. Um, so after you know we finish here today, uh, the department is going to take all the information that we've received, um, documents through emails, um, notes from these meetings. Uh, we're going to draft everything into a comprehensive report. That report will be reviewed and approved internally. Um, once that has happened, we will share it with the committee. It's also going to be shared with the legislature. Um, and then obviously in order to, to move this forward further, um, someone in the legislature needs to raise a bill uh, during session for you. Um, any bill that is raised would, I'm guessing, go to the Public Health Committee um, and there would be a public hearing on it. People would be able to submit testimony, make comments. Um, and then if, if they decide to continue to move that bill along in the process, that's when you would see language drafted and, and work on those finer details of things. And then um, obviously the bill passing the legislature is the final step in the approval process. Um, so does anyone have any questions or any final thoughts? I guess my final thought is that we, I'm hoping that we met um, Karen's and, and Lynn's concerns enough where when we move this forward that if they have any other objections, they would be, um, you know, objections where they would, you know, move to block any of our activities that they would um, certainly bring them to our attention before that happened in a public hearing. Uh, so I always endeavor to bring concerns uh, to the other party before the public hearing, whenever possible. Uh, my only caveat to that is sometimes public hearings have less than five days notice and connecting may be difficult. Uh, but typically our testimony would say something like, 
we have the following concerns. We've been willing participants and working with the parties involved, and we look forward to working with them to get to a resolution of the language so that it's it's not viewed as us trying to be a roadblock, but rather raising an issue so that we can continue to have the conversation. Hopefully that's helpful too. Yeah, I mean, given that we still intend to keep our laundry list um, and we feel very strongly about it, um, I'm not sure. I don't want to do something at the last minute at that hearing where we're, you know, then we're back to the square one. So, right. So, I think the point I was trying to make to you is that the legislative commissioner's office is the attorneys who would draft the language. And yeah. so, um, even if you give them word for word an agreement between all parties where everybody is okay, I can assure you that will not be the draft that comes out. So, um, that's why we've said, you know, when that bill actually gets filed, we'll probably all have to sit down and have another conversation. Um, because even when all the parties have agreed on language before that time and we give it to LCO, it always comes out differently and we have to uh, redraft it. So um, I just so you know, you could hand them the laundry list and they may say that's not how we typically draft statutes. And the legislator says, OK, just give me something so we can have a hearing. And then your laundry list is gone. And then we may be testifying on a different bill than all we've been talking about here. That's why I can't guarantee we wouldn't weigh in with concerns during the legislative hearing because we don't know what will come out as a draft on the bill, okay. even though you could send one thing in. So I think what we're co committing to, and I um, uh, have committed to your lobbyists the same is that we're willing to be participants to have conversations and work with you on language next session what comes out of lco no one will know until it actually shows up um so i can't weigh in one way or the other about what we would say but that we would make a commitment as we have here that we would be willing to work with you on the language okay very much appreciated yeah and i would echo karen's comments um additionally i've been on many scope review committee so have been familiar with the legislative process and you know once the scope comes out you know there could be amendments that could be put on by legislators as well which may or may not be beneficial to you so you know even though this bill if it goes forward and or it's the scope goes forward and you do get a bill i mean it can take different iterations along the path and you know sometimes as with the aprns you know somebody added an amendment and we have to say wait a minute we don't like that we have to you know either go back and discuss or you know withdraw the bill and try again at another time so it's it's a work in progress for sure um this is the first step and you guys have done a great job and i can say you know we'll support the the pharmaceutical update for language that you put in uh, but again as going forward who knows what's going to happen but you know keep an open mind because this is a very frustrating process at times so okay well, we're going to rely on your experience <laughs> And I'll also just remind you that, you know, this committee was open to people who filed an impact statement. Um, there are professions that may feel they're impacted that, you know, didn't, wasn't aware this, this scope was being taken up by the department. They didn't file an impact statement. The public hearings uh, are open to everyone and anyone to submit uh, testimony. So you may um, receive pushback that you didn't think you would because they're not on this committee. So just, you know, Keep that in mind that things could come that you don't you don't anticipate um, because we are a small committee and some of the professions that um, aren't here may read what comes out of LCO and you know have issues with it. Sarah, I'll just say thank you for running a, a very efficient committee and getting us through the process. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so if there's nothing else, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll so entertain the motion. Yeah. <laughs> Did I have a second? I'll second if I wasn't first. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so this meeting is adjourned and um, you will hear from me when our report has been finalized and approved. All right, thank you all. Thank you all very much. Thank we appreciate all the work that you've helped us with. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye-bye. Yes. Happy holidays. <laughs>